I never thought of that as a clap along song, but I like it. <laughs> so for the past several weeks, God has been speaking to us through the Old Testament prophets. And we've heard from Amos, and we heard about Elijah, and now we're hearing from Isaiah. <coughs> Isaiah came about 50 years after Amos. And Amos had been preaching in the northern kingdom of Israel, and Isaiah was speaking to the kingdom of Judah, which was in the south. So maybe you can imagine this reading with a good southern accent. <laughs> this is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Listen to what God is saying to you today through the Holy Spirit in these words. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Benetta, would...
love that we have a whole season that we get to talk about light. I love when we come into the sanctuary and we have a tree with lights and we have flickering candles and we light candles and we sing about light and we hear about light. It's that time of year when things are getting darker and the the days are getting shorter and we need all the light in our lives that we can get. A little background. In the book of Isaiah, before the book of Isaiah even happened, you'll remember that God's people had been ruled not by kings but by judges and that God's people wanted a king, they said specifically, so we can be like the other countries. (laughs) We want a king so we can be like them. We're not happy being who we are. And God told them that they didn't need that kind of king because they were God's people. God wanted to be their king, and they were created to be different from the rest of the world so that they could carry God's light through all the earth. God wanted to lead the people himself so that he could love them and guide them and provide for them. And the prophet Samuel was in the place of warning God's people that earthly kings would not be so great. They would always succumb to power and greed and selfish desires and that it wouldn't end well. But the people insisted, this is what we want, we know what we want, this is who we are, we want to be like the other nations, and God gave them what they wished for. The results, of course, were disastrous. God's people became oppressed, they were heavily taxed, they were being used to serve the desires of the kings and the agendas of each new government. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah, which divided because of the corruption and because of the the infighting in the governments, and both of those kingdoms had forgotten who they really were, that they were God's people first, and their true allegiance should have been to God and God alone and not to any earthly king. So the people of the time were living in a great darkness, a time of shadow, a time of uncertainty. By this time, the northern kingdom of Israel, where Amos preached, had been captured and forced into exile. And the kingdom of Judah, where Isaiah wrote, had been invaded and would be brought into exile in the near future. God's people were faced with the carnage of warfare. The people were in anguish. They were scared, they were confused, they wanted things to change, but they had no power at that point to change them, and they had lost all hope. In the midst of that sort of darkness, Isaiah comes to them and brings them a profound message of hope from the Lord himself. Today, we're in a situation where, as a culture, people have forgotten who we are. We've forgotten where our blessings come from and where greed and power are false gods that people chase after. We live in a land where more and more people are tempted by the forces of evil to serve new agendas, agendas that seem to have little in common with God's word, agendas devoid of peace and justice and righteousness, agendas which promote disorientation and confusion rather than clarity and truth. We live in a society where evil and hatred run rampant where people are angry and divided and many are suffering, though often that suffering is well hidden. And while most of us haven't experienced the carnage of war in our own homeland, this fall we were given glimpses into what that carnage of war looks like as we've watched the people of Afghanistan 
and we've prayed for all God's children who are suffering there. Our world can be a very dark place. On top of all that, some of you are dealing with some powerful darkness in your own lives right now. Many are struggling with grief, which can be magnified as the holidays approach. Some of us are very lonely, even though you show up to worship with a smile on your face. Some of you are dealing with significant and life-altering health issues. We all have loved ones whom we worry about, and that darkness can be suffocating. We wonder what it all means. So know this, today, in this place, God is speaking light into your darkness. This is our first Sunday of Advent. Christmas is still weeks away. We have many days until that beautiful candlelight service that we all love. But this is the Sunday of hope. And God wants you to hear words of hope today. God has given you a lifeline of hope right now. Through Isaiah, God says to you, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah was telling God's people that a new king as in a new political figure would come to them. And I'm here to tell you that our true king, one beyond all political ideals, has already come. And that that king is here with us now. For Judah, hope was on the horizon. But for you, for me, hope is here. We won't celebrate it until December 24th, but our Sovereign King has come. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what kind of ruler is he? Our King is a wonderful counselor, always available to you in your time of need. You have 24-7 access to his throne of grace, where you, as God's beloved child can speak freely and candidly with God about whatever is in your heart. You can laugh, you can cry, you can lament, you can dance, you can yell, and our God, our King, will listen to you and love you and act on your behalf. Our King is mighty and powerful. All earthly kingdoms and governments are temporary and will crumble. States, cities, nations will crumble. Even our own government here in the United States will fall apart. But the kingdom ruled by Jesus Christ will endure forever. And the peace that God gives to those who live in that kingdom will never end. Our king will uphold this beautiful realm with true justice and righteousness. We talked about justice and righteousness when we heard the words of Amos, and we know that here on earth, not all judgments are righteous. On earth, we want to claim that we want justice, but we don't want to be judged ourselves. We like judgments, but we don't want to be judged because we know we would never pass the test of righteousness on our own. But because of Jesus Christ, our King, who comes to be with us and give us the righteousness of Jesus, we can now fully embrace the reign of Jesus Christ in which justice and righteousness are everywhere and at all times. Today, you and I can walk in the light of Jesus Christ. We pray now that Christ's kingdom will come to us, and we look forward to the day when our king will come again. For on that day, there will be no more darkness at all. As we wait for the second coming 
of our King, Christ has chosen to dwell within us. And we live each day in that great paradox of already, but not yet. And our God has chosen a place to place that light in you. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the joy of Jesus, our King, who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us proclaim the good news of our gracious and loving God, the one who came to be the light in the shadows. Let us sing praises to our wonderful counselor and pray to our mighty God. Let us worship Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. For Christ's is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.